Welcome YouTubers. T today's tutorial is we are going to open a GeoGel map package map in the third party standalone carry map app which is good for both iOS and Android. You can download them in the Google Play Store or the uh, iTunes uh, store as well. Free app. Okay. Uh, we will also go over just a few basic functionality features of the Carry Map app. But uh, today's tutorial primarily is going to be um, how to open a map uh, as well as that leads to possibly if you're on iOS um, and Android as well how to proceed from the Dropbox and Google Drive cloud storage of your maps to your handheld device okay so let's get started um, you're gonna go to your carry map app which is the butterfly icon carry map okay we're gonna open that up okay and it's gonna bring you to your library okay I am in this app all the time so it's just the recents tab is just uh, maps that you've already opened it keeps into memory what is on your device already so you once once this is populated with maps you'll just go to your recents and press on them uh, and that'll open that map up and you'll be ready to go if you're starting from scratch um, what you'll do is go to your map tabs and for many of you this will be your first time so I'm gonna go ahead and disable this function here what we need to do is be able to get your maps um, which came from your downloadable email link you downloaded them to your desktop and sorry about that um, and then you've uploaded them either to Dropbox or Google Drive so you can see on your maps tab you just have a local storage and this device option the right uh, orange circle plus sign icon press on that you'll get some new features here you'll see the Dropbox icon the Google Drive icon the ArcGIS icon and the Google Earth icon we're not going to go into ArcGIS or Google Earth at this time we're going to focus on the Dropbox and the Google Drive icon all these are is the ability to connect to those accounts so whichever one you have and whichever one you use for cloud storage that you've uploaded your GeoGel map package files to, go ahead and use that. I've uploaded mine to Google Drive since I'm a Google Power user. I have a Google Drive account and uh, that's where I store a lot of my things. So we're going to click on the Google Drive. It's Since I'm on Android and I have a Google account, um, I'm just going to click on this if you're iOS it's gonna bring you to another screen uh, that tells you to log in using your account credentials either for Google Drive or Dropbox follow the on-screen prompts log into it okay this is how Android does it it's creating now notice I have three options the Scout Pro 36, scoutpro36 at gmail.com is my Google Drive account. I'm going to click on that. Notice I am right in Google Drive with all my folders that you see on your desktop when you're in Google Drive. Okay? I would go to Carry Map. I would go to Maps or wherever you saved yours, primarily uh, in your GeoJaw maps folder that you've created either on Dropbox or Google map uh, Google, Google Drive go to your C CMF maps and what you want to do since I'm not going to do this because I already have mine all downloaded to my device but under each name of each map which is the dot CMF you can see the cast and creek WMA dot CMF all the way to the right you have the size and you have a cloud with an uh, arrow pointing down 
download that. If you're on Android, make sure you're hooked up, or iOS, make sure you're hooked up to Wi-Fi, and it'll take some time and it'll download that map to your device. If you're iOS, it'll download it and then ask you to open it in the Carry Map app, or it may open itself automatically in the Carry Map app. At which time it'll be in your Recents tab every time there after you go into the app itself. Okay, so that's how you uh, link your uh, Dropbox or Google Drive account to get your maps from the cloud onto your device and in your app. Once this is done, you never need to use your cell data. You can turn on your airplane mode, your do not disturb mode, and you will have all your aerial data, your topo data, uh, all your line work in your maps. You'll be totally off the grid. You'll never have to worry about uh, uh, trying to see where you're at again, where you're at again, okay? So I'm going to go to my Recents tab, and we're going to open up um, the Mississippi Homochitta Central. I'm going to go there. It may take a little while. This is a massive file. The Homochitta is 300,000 acres. Um, I was able to section it off into three, uh, three sections, a central, an east, and a west, home, home Machita. So uh, the file sizes on these are probably the, at the max any handheld device can actually deal with or open. They're anywhere from 2 to 4 gig, and they'll never be over that. Realize, your map file probably will not be uh, this large in size. Um, this is a huge area, um, and all the aerial data is actually in, in this map. So, real quick, let's go over some of these things. Um, the obvious middle right is going to be your zoom in zoom out you can also pinch to, to zoom and pinch back in to zoom out okay that's easy uh, bottom left you'll see a GPS icon make sure your location services on your device whether your iOS or Android are turned on wait about two three minutes make sure that's uh, you have a GPS signal then you would click on that I'm not going to because we're not outside we're indoors but once you do that it will zoom in to where you are on this map that's right in front of us okay uh, you have a scale bar on the bottom right that will actually change depending on your zoom level and your maximum or minimum extent of the map screen uh, uh, top left the man walking this is to turn on and off a uh, uh, real-time track so once your GPS is enabled and you start scouting or hiking or mapping you can actually press the little man the tracking icon and it will leave a small breadcrumb line trail of where you've been all day you could choose to save that later uh, I usually never really use that unless I go someplace well off the beaten path. Um, the search function up in the top right, you really won't use that that much because you, you really don't know the names of your data. Um, we will go over a more in-depth advanced tutorial on the Carry Map app itself because it's very powerful. You can do a bunch of things in it, but just to get started, uh, that's what this tutorial is going to be about. Top right again, next to the magnifying glass, your three dots. This is going to be how you would measure your length. You just click on the screen to measure your length, measure area. If you have coordinates, I don't know why you would, but you could actually fat finger in the coordinates and it'll boom, go to it. Add a push pin by GPS. You can press that and it would add a uh, waypoint or what they call a push pin to the exact spot that you're at using the GPS. There's also a different way to add push pins or waypoints. We'll go through that in a more in-depth uh, tutorial on the app at a later time. Close that out.
Um, if we go to the three uh, horizontal lines on the top left, this kind of shows you your content. I repeat, do not choose select base map. The whole reason that you ordered a GeoJaw map is to have your line work, aerial, and topos all in one package and offline. No need to put aerial data on top of aerial data. Plus, if you choose select base map, you will be using your cell data. Do not use select base map except for experimental tests indoors under Wi-Fi or unless you're rich and you want to actually spend money on your data cell coverage okay um, the the orange plus sign is just another way for you to go open another map I don't know why they put it there go back um, the three vertical dots next to the name of the map zoom in if you click map info which is kinda cool um, there's, there's my business icon and name, the name of the map, the publisher, myself, the company, my email, and my site. So you can get to my email if something goes wrong really quick just by going, uh, pressing on these three dots and going to map info if you have a problem in the field or, or if you got a problem right at that moment, you can send me an email and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, if you click on the actual name of the map you will get options and this is really cool this is your legend or your layers it shows you everything in the map notice from the top there's a MS County data it depends on your map this was made in Mississippi because that's where uh, the Homochitta National Forest is so if I click go all the way to the right you'll see an orange toggle these orange toggles you can turn all that data off and just have the aerials on okay or right next to the orange toggle the arrow to the right you press that this is all the data okay so you have line work that are your towns it'll be out, outlined in dashed orange and and so on your highways red public roads yellow so on and so on for your creeks okay you can turn all this stuff on and off as you wish if something's bothering you you can turn it off okay the other section of line work data is the Homochittle National Forest itself notice we have points that are purple that are recreation sites I'll show you that in a minute wildlife management areas in brown the boundaries the actual ownership whether it's national forest or private is shaded in, in a pink we'll check that out in a minute so that's how you would turn off some of your layers off and on which is really cool and then notice your aerials if I click on that there's all the high resolution as current as Google can get aerial imagery for this entire area that's cool you turn stuff off and on I don't recommend that you turn off and on your aerials leave that on okay this central index is 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 just a boundary that I've included uh, just for myself and I've left that off okay so we can go back to the map let's let's kind of zoom in I see a few things here let's go to uh, uh, the southwesternmost corner of the central home Chitta map. That's the Casting Creek area. Notice we have a little purple point. Okay, look, we've once now got to a zoom level where my aerials are going to start to pop in. Look how awesome that is. Now, this is a four gig file, man. And look how seamless this is. I'm scrolling around fast. So awesome. Okay in and out no lag you can see this point right here is the Homochitta wildlife management area um, you can see I have uh, usually if you're in forest service area you're gonna see the FS so let's zoom out notice the roads so what's really cool is we have local uh, county roads highways which are in yellow okay that's the Oxford Meadville Road but what we also have and it's very difficult to actually map and have in any map package that you buy if you have Forest Service roads in your map it's probably a topo map not something like this this is line work that I've painstakingly um, actually mapped in myself 
So the four service road names are accurately depicted here by 155A and all of them will be a kind of a uh, yellow uh, reddish dash. So that tells you your forest service roads and look how they're all over. You have your boundaries of Caney Creek Wildlife Management Area. Notice your creek right here. Your creek is coming down but then it goes into an intermittent stream which probably in dry times will just be a dry ditch that you could actually walk as a trail to get into a certain area. Okay, if that, let's, let's do, um, let's do a little uh, scenario here. Let's go here. We're going to go into our legend. We're going to go into the Homochitta National Forest. Nope, wrong one. We're going to go into county data. Let's turn off perennial creeks and intermittent streams and go back. Now look at that. A trained person in woodsmanship can tell hardwoods from pine, but most people can't. And if you open this just like that, you wouldn't know that there was a creek anywhere near there. Okay? Much less where it was wider as a perennial stream and where it might actually be dry as an intermittent stream. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. Go back into our toggle. Go into our data legend. Wrong one again. And we will turn toggle them back on. Okay. Boom. They're back on. Awesome. Can zoom back out a little bit and get a little overview going. Okay. Notice that. The wildlife management area that state held is also inside of the national forest boundaries. Notice the national forest boundaries in green. Okay. Now, notice right here. This is the pink shaded area I talked about. If you are hunting an area or hiking an area, here is a road. A county road. Temple Road, Hester Road, you come to the end of it, you park, you grab your gun, you get out, you follow the Forest Service Road. You say, I want to go hunt all the way back right here. Well, you will see from this map that you have to cross through an area that is actually a different color. It's a transparent shaded pink. Notice how it says PVT. That area is private. Okay? private area. I'm not sure if there would be a gate there at this bound boundary or what. Notice how I did that rotation. I'm pinching to zoom but I'm pitching leaving both fingers on the screen and rotating my fingers. You can do this when you're navigating to have a track up type deal. If you mess up and say man I wanted to go back the right way. Notice once you start rotating in the top right you now have a compass rose click on the compass rose and it will go to north up automatically okay and disappear so this is a basic overview on how we um, can get our GeoGel map package file from the cloud our Dropbox or Google Drive storage and load it onto our handheld device so it will be offline as well as this being somewhat of a first tutorial on how to use the carry map app okay join us next time we also have videos um, on how to upload uh, your map file from your email download link to Dropbox and Google Drive check that out I'll put it in the description below um, and give us a thumbs up and we will see you next time on the GeoJaw Mapping Solutions YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.